Okay, title of this message is Like a Tree. Okay, so I'm going to talk about trees today, and I'm going to show you also from what Pr Ricky was preaching last week, and it kind of led me to read down a little bit um, about trees. I'm going to, we're going to go to Psalm 1 first. Psalm 1, and then if you want to find Mark 4 and John 15, you can. We'll go there later. And then I'll also have a few scriptures you don't have to find. I'll just read through them. Um, but Psalm chapter 1, and I kind of, like I said, I'll kind of tell you how I got this message. I was listening to Ricky preach, and then I read down a little bit in Mark 4. He starts talking about the mustard seed and how, you know, we become a tree. Um, and then yesterday, I was, we were, me and my wife were eating breakfast, and... Um, we are talking about diet, you know. Diet's an important thing, guys. I, can't, I could preach on that for hours. I mean, what's the number one, what was the reason we fell in the beginning in the garden? It was food, amen? <laughs> food. Picking from the wrong tree. It was a good tree. God was just saying, don't touch it, though. Because that's a good tree. But don't touch it, okay? Because God knew if we ever touched that tree, we would have knowledge of what evil is. And if we had knowledge of what evil is, we would start acting like we weren't supposed to because that was just the nature of man. So, um, so we were talking about food and, you know, my wife said, you know, it's kind of like, my wife said, you know, it's kind of like a tree. You know, if the root's bad, the fruit is bad. Okay, so, and, and I actually talk about that here in a minute. Bad roots, bad fruits, and good root. You know, if you've got good roots, you've got good fruit. So what's on the inside of you determines how you feel, how, how good you look, your health, etc. So we was talking about trees, and I went and looked some stuff up. and So I started, I'm going to start in Psalm verse 1, <coughs> chapter 1, sorry, <coughs> chapter 1, verse 1. It says, blessed is the man. I love how he starts with blessed. Blessed, 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 blessed is the man. That walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners. Who does that anyway? I'm like, who is, who is walking like that? You know, I guess when you, you get saved, you're not around those people, I guess, as much. You try to, you know, you start moving away from those. You used to hang around those people that always tell you how to do it, how to do it but they'd always tell you how to do it the wrong way. Well, what you got to do is you got to go in and do this, and you got to do things behind people's back so that they don't know. You know, so anyway. So, he says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. So when you get saved, now the law and God's word becomes something that you savor, you desire, you can't have enough of it, you want more of it, you can't get enough. Blessed is, blessed his, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Now we were always taught growing up, meditation is some type of yama, 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 you know, you, you you get still and you make sounds and you la 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 and it's turned into what the devil calls yoga you know not picking on anybody it goes to yoga <laughs> but if you get into the malpractice of yoga then it can become a problem you got to be careful who lays hands on you and all that so you got to be careful about that stuff but if you go into a deeper dive into what the word meditate is it is also called talking to yourself meditation can be talking to yourself you ever talk to yourself don't lie that's not a rhetorical question i want to see <laughs> exactly yeah absolutely well you're supposed to talk to yourself i am above and not beneath i am the head and not the tail what, what are you supposed to do when when hell is thrown at you you got to start talking to yourself what do you think they do in locker rooms? They're like, yeah, man, we're going to do this today. You know, and they're getting fired up and they're slapping hands and knuckles and hugging each other and like, yeah, we're going to do that. You know, they're always, they're not, you know, they're not just, hey, guys. They're not meditating, you know, silently. It's, it's noisy in those locker rooms. Now watch this. It says in verse 3, verse 3, he says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the what? The rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. Okay, now listen, this is the type of tree we're supposed to be. Okay, you're supposed to be a tree planted by the rivers of water that God, that God you know, sends out and nourishes you with. Okay, that brings forth his fruit in his season, not prematurely. 
His leaf also shall not wither. I'm going to spend a lot of time on that one statement right there. Okay? I'm going to spend a lot of time on that one today. And whatsoever he does shall prosper. Blessed is the man that desires the law of God, the word of God. Can't get enough of it. Who learns like that song they were singing. Learns how to love the voice of God. Loves to learn about his goodness. So watch what I found. Okay, now I'm going to use symbol, you know, symbolically, I'm going to go through some symbolism today and talk about some things that I found about withering leaves. A lot of really good information in here about withered leaves. Okay? So it says, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in this season. His leaves shall not wither. So it's explaining this tree. This tree that is firmly planted. You know what water does to, a, to tree roots. It draws the root towards it, right? Anytime you water something, the tree root wants to... Isn't that amazing? Isn't a tree amazing? I'm just fascinated that a whole oak tree is inside of an acorn. That's just amazing. It's amazing. So I'm going to go through some things today. And if you're taking notes, I'm going to call this one, the first one, a dying tree. Okay? A dying tree. So I've got several things. There's drought, root failure, soil deficiencies, air pollutants, vascular. I'll go through all of them if, you're if you want to take notes. But these are just some of the things that explain the cause of leaf withering. Okay? Number one is drought. When there isn't enough water, the plant loses more water than it takes in through transpiration. I'm going to spend some time on transpiration, okay? I didn't even know what transpiration was. I know what transpire is, okay? But transpiration is a process that is used to describe how plants and trees operate, okay? This can cause the leaves and stems to collapse and wilt, okay? Now, I think of, okay, transpiration, okay, so I'm, let me read you something that I found that explains transpiration, because I, of course, am not a botanist or a tree expert or a plant expert by any means, so I'm going to read to you what it is. It says, okay, so this is the process of transpiration. Hang in there with me, okay? If you think about tall trees over 100 feet tall, water must be delivered to the trees at the top of the trees all of the time. If not, those leaves will wilt and die. When water escapes through the leaves into the air through transpiration, it provides a pulling source. Okay? So I look at this process as God's way of trying to pull you up. Okay? And I'll show you why here in a second. This pulling force pulls water up and out a plant through tiny little tubes called the xylem. These tubes, xylems, can be thought of as pipes inside the plant that deliver water to all parts of the plant. They are highly effective at stacking up water molecules. Don't forget that. These are, they're stacking up water molecules, okay, in long chains and pulling them upward and outward. To the leaves of the plant, xylem exists in all parts of the plant, roots, stems, leaves, and everywhere in between. Now, as water is pulled up in the plant through the xylem, the water molecules are all tied together like a long chain. Okay, I just love God, how he designs things. It is just, it is just amazing. Watch this, okay? These chains of water create what is called turgidity. I hope I said that correctly. Any botanists in here? Any tree experts? You plant expert? Is that, is that turgidity? Okay. Now watch this. Okay. These chains of water call, call, create turgidity, meaning the plant is rigid, strong, and upright. Watch this. Essentially, it is the opposite of wilting. We know what happens if you don't water a plant. It goes down, right? Okay. Now watch this. Plants do not have bones to keep them upright. They rely on the turgidity to keep them upright and strong. God just trying to pull you up. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing humans had to have bones because if we would have had to rely on turgidity, we'd have had to walk around like this all the time. You know why? Because we probably weren't spending much time in the Word. We have to have bones. He didn't make us a tree he made us like a tree, 
and explains how we're like a tree in some ways, but we're not trees, right? And the revelation I kind of got was a tree can't move. A tree, wherever it is planted, has to rely on God to provide the water. Humans don't have to stay near the water, do they? Humans can get up and say, you know, I don't want to go to church anymore. I don't want to read the Word anymore. I don't care about the Word anymore. I don't think it's working for me. We can go to the water or we can walk away from the water anytime we want in our lifetime. As a kid, as a, you know, middle-aged person, adult, older person, don't matter. We don't have to stay where the water source is, do we? Now watch this. When the soil of a plant runs too low of available water, the water chains in the xylem become thinner and thinner due to less water. Effectively, the plant is losing water faster than it is absorbing it. When this happens, the plant loses its turgidity and begins to wilt. Man, that's good stuff. I had no idea that that's why. I just thought, you know, the plant just, you know, as long as you water it, it it stands up. Who was sitting around one day and said, hey, let's figure out why plants stand up and they wilt. Why do they wilt and why do they stand up? We don't know. Amazing, the science behind it and how God made so many things and how they operate and function. So I think of, like I said, transpiration is as God above us pulling us up higher to a higher level all day, every day. That would be a great athletic apparel a slogan. I, I know that would just all day, every day. Not just do it. No, no. No, this is all day, every day. All day we are looking and going up. All day, every day. The Bible says he meditates on the word day and night. Even when you're sleeping, your spirit man is still awake. Your spirit man don't need sleep. It's your body that needs sleep. Meditating on the word day and night. Now the word transpire, if you define it, it means to occur or happen. So we need to be occurring and happening all day, every day. Amen? That's why, that's why the English language is so messed up. Transpire means to occur or happen. But transpiration is a process that is explaining the process of how plants survive. Amen? So that's why people get so mad about the English language. Amen? Transpire, transpire. I mean, it's the same word. Just read that. You just add the Asian at the end. You'd think transpiration would be the process, the process of occurring and happening. You're out there, you're doing, you know. So, drought, number one, not taking in enough water. Okay, watch this. Number two, root failure. Just like we were talking about earlier. Bad root, bad fruit. Good root, good fruit. Now, it is hard to eat a lot of good things because if you have done any research, you know that America does not have the greatest food. We got food, but it ain't that good. There's too much stuff put in it, amen? But man, it sure is yummy. So root failure, watch this, is caused by disease, insects, parasites, or lack of oxygen. What do you think the devil's trying to do when you hear about cancers, or you hear about organ failure, or you hear about diseases in people's bodies, what's happening? The root is starting to wither and die. When something inside you ceases to function, now there are some, thank God there are some body parts that you, know, you don't necessarily have to have. If you're a doctor, you know you can rip some of those out and just keep on going, right? Just pluck it out. You don't need that, just pluck it out. If you got a bad one, start praying that even if they did take it out, you just pray that God puts a new one in there. It's there for a reason. You might be able to survive without it, but I'm, I guarantee you God put it there for a reason. If it's an appendix or what's the other one they always take out? The, um, the gallbladder, right? Because it produces pain and it's like, you know, doctors like, well, we don't need that. I don't, I don't even know how they found out that you didn't need it. You know, were they experimenting one day? They say, hey, let's just take it out. It, it's bad. Let's just take it out. Let's see if he makes it. <laughs> how does that, how did that operate? How do they figure this stuff out? Caused by disease and insect. What do insects do? They're like parasites. 
That's what the bark is of a tree. The bark protects the tree. The bark protects it from outside invaders. Protecting, it's like the armor of God going around the tree. Parasites, lack of oxygen, suffocation. You can't breathe. Not necessary, necessarily physically, but maybe you're suffo- suffocating in your finances. Maybe you are suffocating physically. Maybe there is a disease or something that is causing you to habitually or over and over have the same problems over and over and over and over. One of them, for instance, would be diabetes. That's a constant problem over and over and over. It's, something, it's where your body doesn't operate correctly, and it's always a, a problem for you that can cause you to go into, um, what's, what do they call it? Um, diabetic uh, shock is what it is. Yes, diabetic shock. You go, you go and eventually you just go to, you, you go to sleep. You don't even know where you're at. You become disoriented. Eventually, that's it. You're done. That's a constant problem. Watch this one. Soil deficiencies. This one was just so obvious. This one was just so obvious. Okay, watch this. Soil deficiencies. A lack of water or nutrients can cause the leaves to wither, especially at the edges. Okay, so watch this. Low nutrients, okay? Soil deficiency means you're... Y'all know we're made of dirt, right? You know, we, we were created out of the dirt of the earth. When we die, the Bible says we go back as dirt. We go back to the earth, right? Your body is made up of all kinds of minerals in the earth. And I can name maybe a few. Is it magnesium, calcium, boron, copper? That's just a few, right? Did I say all those? Because those are actually minerals that we have to have. If you don't have certain things in your body, your body starts operating incorrectly. Okay, so low nutrients. Watch this. Christians Christians can be watered but lack some nutrients. They could have a soil deficiency, leaving them rough around the edges. Amen? Anybody know any of those kind? So I wrote this. Saved but still sinning. Save but cussing. Save but still doing drugs. Save but doesn't take God serious. Doesn't go to church. You can look totally healthy, but still lack certain things. So what happens with those certain things? Those certain things start to look a little rough around the edges. You can be saved going to heaven, but still not have some things figured out. If if you've ever heard Corey tell the story about the girl, the lady when he was preaching one time... She, I don't, I, she was a prostitute. Was that what it was? She was a prostitute. And after the service, you know, she comes up and, you know, she just comes up and she got saved and she comes up and she goes, I just, I just love that I don't have to blankety blank blank hang out with those people anymore. Well, inside of her, she was saved, but she was still what? A little rough around the edges, wasn't she? Why? Because she was lacking some stuff, lacking some information. You can have it, you can even think you have it totally figured out. Like, I'm totally healthy, but when you go get blood work done, what do they find out? Well, you're lacking this, and you have this issue, and you have... It's amazing. They pull up like, like 150 things that they can tell you. Hey, this looks good. This is normal. This is a little high. You need to bring this down a little bit. But it's... They, and what are they testing? The blood. It's the life source. If the blood isn't healthy, the body ain't healthy. Soil deficiencies, lack of nutrients. Hanging around the river of living water sometimes, but leaving, you know, late at night when there's a party somewhere. Or going somewhere, hanging out with wrong people. Or going and hanging around, doing the wrong things. But when church, when Sunday happens, hey, I'm back at church, I'm back to the river, back to hanging out where the river where the river flows and where the, you know, the river of living water is flowing, feeding my roots where I'm supposed to be. But, you know, there's still a little bit in the world that I just can't let go of yet. I've taken notes number whatever, one, two, three, four. Air pollutants. Oh, this is a great leaf witherer. Where do your words go? They go out into the air, don't they? 
I can tell you countless times, I hear kids at school all the time saying negative things about themselves. Well, I just don't have it all together, or I'm just not good at this, or I'm just not pretty enough, or I'm just not this, or I'm just not that. I'll never be this or that. He's way better than I'll ever be. Air pollutants. Air pollutants can wither your leaves. You know, we can't make everyone say the correct things. So our atmosphere is always charged with negative air pollutants. We can't make people say the right. And if you're the type that always says, well, I just rebuke that in Jesus' name, you know, right in front of their face, and they're not ready for that, and they're not saying, they don't even know what you're saying, it can come off as rude, even though what you said was right. Amen? <laughs> How many times do you ever want to say that? Well, I just rebuke that in Jesus' name. Well, sometimes you don't always have to say it where the other person can hear it because you might run them off. But you can darn sure say it under your breath. Like, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. If I ever hear that again, I'm telling you, this makes your, like Corey says, makes the, uh, tor- the taco sauce or the hot sauce boil up on the inside of you to where you want to say something. Air pollutants. Your words go into the air. Talking about leaf withering here, okay? Watch this one. Vascular, okay? Watch this. Vascular diseases. Diseases like oak wilt, okay? Verticulium wilt, whatever that is, or fusarium wilt can cause leaves to scorch, okay? So vascular, definition of vascular as it relates to botany. Relating to or denoting the plant tissues which conduct water sap, which is some trees have water sap, I guess, or water and sap, I'm sorry, and nutrients in flowering plants and their relatives. So we're talking about the vessels that supply, that take the blood where it's supposed to go. Okay? Making sure what you know about God gets carried to all parts of your life even the ones you don't want to let go of the blood vessels have to be healthy blood vessels can also do what they can clog blood vessels can clog what happens when they clog bad things happen right causes the body to shut down certain things start happening as a result of bad things in the vessels what you know about God has to be carried to all parts, even the parts that you're not willing to give up that have something to do with the world that are really fun and make you feel really good. You have to take all of God's revelation to all parts of the body. Without blood, what happens? Without, let's say, for instance, the blood doesn't get carried to the end of your fingertips. What happens to the end of your fingers? They die. <laughs> and they fall off. Watch this one. <clears throat> Corey talks about this one a lot. This is a good one. Waterlogged soil. Who knew that you could overwater a plant? That's why when you buy plants at the store, right? When you buy plants at the store, it comes in that little container. But what's in the bottom of that container? Holes. Because what happens if you water it and the water can't escape? The roots die. Come waterlogged. Okay? So waterlogged. Watch this. Too much water can drown the leaf tissue, causing the leaves to wilt. Okay? So Corey calls this, and it's what I would call, fat sheep. Taking in the word, but not transpiring. Transpiration of the world, of the word. Transpiration is very essential for the tree. If the tree cannot transpire, the tree dies. So God created the tree and said, you can have water, but you need to be releasing that water. I even read on there that, um, I forgot what tree it is. I think it's the big red oaks or whatever. And the red oaks in California, the big tall ones, I don't remember. They said, is it the, the what? Sequoias? It was one of those trees. I don't know if it was a sequoia, but they were talking about how those trees can transpire 500 gallons a day. That's a lot of transpiration. There's some water tanks that use the, I mean, what is that? That's a quarter of the size of our water truck that we use to water the arena during the rodeos. That's a lot of water. 
So God has designed us to transpire, always pulling us up. Don't just keep that water to yourself, little human. Bring it up, baby. Come on, bring it up. Take that water that I just poured on your roots and bring it up to the top and send it out to the leaves. Send it out to, into the world so that we can live. Man, if we didn't have trees, we'd all die. Trees have to transpire. They take in our bad stuff and they give us the good stuff. Now watch this one. Oh, this is a good one. This one is called fire light or fire blight. I'm sorry, fire blight. It's a bacterial disease that causes leaves to wilt and look burned. It usually appears early in the growing season and only affects the infected part of the tree. Okay, so fire blight appears in the what? The growing season. What does that explain? What does that tell you? What happens when Christians are baby Christians just finding out about Jesus? What are they in? They're in the growing phase. What do we normally call people that have been around Jesus their whole life and they're mature in the Word? We call them mature Christians, right? So this is the growing phase. Appears in the growing season. Just when you're about to blossom, boom, devil. The devil has to take the Word as fast as he can. He can't let you hold on to it very long because he knows if you hold on to it, and you start growing and maturing that he can't take that part away from you. Okay, once you know that the Bible, the Bible says you can lay hands on yourself, you can lay hands on other people, and you can be healed. Your body can be physically healed. Well, if the devil doesn't take that from you immediately and put sickness on you, and when you're trying to grow spiritually, if he can't attack you at the beginning and you get a hold of that and you hang on to it, and it starts growing within you and you start, what? Meditating on it. And then you start living it and you start laying hands on yourself when you feel sick or whatever. You start laying hands on other people. If the devil gets to you in time, when you're still a baby, still learning about all this stuff, fire blight. Causes to, the leaves to wilt and look burned. So your fire, you know, you're taking off. You know, this fire is kindling within you. And then all of a sudden, pff, he puts it out. Fire blight. New information. The devil is always afraid of you learning new information. He doesn't care about what you already know. He's, he's already tried to take that from you and you held on to it. And you grew in that, whether it's tithing or talking in tongues or, you know, learn how to lay hands on people or watching miracles, believing in miracles, just believing in the miracles. He knows, well, I, can't, I couldn't stop him there. He's already got a hold of that one. He's going to keep that one. But this new one, if I can stop this new one, this tithing message, if I can get that from him, man, I can slap a little bit of financial hardship on him and bring in the storm, make the ship rock around a little bit, maybe I can cause some fire blight. Look like you were taking off, you were starting to blossom, and then all of a sudden, your leaf just withers and dies looks burnt on the edges watch this this one is called marcescent I don't even know, I've never heard of that word marcescent a physiological process that causes leaves to wither and persist on the tree especially in deciduous trees it's most common in juvenile trees but can disappear as the tree matures did y'all get that? Can disappear when the tree matures. Now, what is marcescent? It's dead things you're trying to shed, but it won't let go. Thank God we shed skin cells, right? Because our skin, we just grow up and look like, you know, look like the, uh, what was that, the Goodyear, the Goodyear guy, the Goodyear, bl yeah, what was that guy, what was the, yeah, the Michelin man. Just grow up and you just keep on blowing up. Thank God for the subtraction process, right? The shedding process. Get rid of old dead skin cells, right? I mean, the skin, the skin uh, industry selling skin products, that's a big industry. Got to keep the skin looking healthy. Dead things you're trying to shed, but they won't let go. It stays attached, hoping to regain life again. 
That's what dead things do that you're trying. That's what happens when you've done all these wrong things your whole life. Then you get saved and you realize that all those wrong things were things you shouldn't have been doing. And you're trying to get rid of them, but they keep hanging on like, oh God, please, don't let me go, please. Come back. But when the tree matures and he figures out how to pray in the Holy Ghost, how to lay hands on the sick, and starts maturing in his faith, what happens? Those leaves go away and they never come back. They fall off. They're done. They're gone. Marcescent. And then at the very bottom, I had to tell you this, okay? It says, if your tree leaves are wilting, you should take action immediately to save it. Well, (laughs) that's a no-brainer, am I right? That's a no-brainer. You're starting to wither over here, and now you've got to figure out, well, what does the Word say? I need new information to handle old problems. Woo, that's pretty good right there. All day, every day. New information can fix old problems that have been attached to it, like parasites, you know. You're just hanging on to you. I heard a preacher one time say, you know, the difference between a protege and a parasite. A protege wants what's in the heart of the mentor, but a parasite wants what's in your hand. They're always looking for a hand, handout, you know. That's the difference between a, a protege who's looking to God to get mentored for new information. A parasite is always just something hanging around, wanting something. It's what parasites do to trees. It's what fleas and ticks are on a dog, Right? They're not protégés. They don't care what the, you know what the dog has to say. Amen. All they care about is the blood that's on the inside of the dog. Whoo, that's good stuff. That is so good. Watch what Mark chapter four. Okay, now now you can turn to Mark chapter four. Okay, I'm headed toward closing mode. Okay, I'm heading towards it. Okay, that's a lot of good information. Mark four. This is the part I was reading last week when Ricky was preaching. Mark chapter four, verse thirty. It says. Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? So, God? so Jesus is sitting there saying, now how should we compare the kingdom of God? Or what comparison shall we compare it? He says, like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown into the earth, is less than all the seeds that, that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it grows up. It matures, Right? And becomes greater than all the herbs and shoots out what? Great branches. What are we describing here? Describing a tree. So that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. Okay, so I call this one, if you're taking notes, a tree of security. It becomes, the Bible says right here in these scriptures, it says it becomes greater than all. It didn't say the Christian birds would come to dwell in it. You know, all the eagles, because we're always compared to eagles. Like, oh, only the eagles are going to come around. The little peasant birds and all the little, the little black birds that are always at Walmart eating all the french fries are going to come nest. No, it says birds. Okay? You have to learn how to get new information so that you can not only minister to the saved birds, but to the lost birds eating the french fries at Walmart. Okay? Ones that are always following you around like this, <laughs> waiting for you to drop a French fry that you got at McDonald's at Walmart, you know. They're just waiting. If you show security to the lost, guess who they come to when they have nowhere to turn? You have to, I wrote this down, you have to demonstrate God's type of security. When they see that you're not insecure, which is a word overused in a public school system, majorly. Oh, well, he's just insecure. I'm like, tell him to get over it. It's okay. Insecurity can be a good thing. It'll bring you out of your, you know, being insecure can teach you how to deal with insecurity. When you feel this way, and you don't want to feel like that anymore, let's figure out how to not feel like that anymore. What new information can I have that's going to teach me how not to be insecure? He just triggered me. Well, turn the trigger off. 
Turn it off. I'm triggered. Yeah, we're all triggered. I get triggered when you act like that. I'm just triggered. He triggered. He said something that triggered me. Well, you're triggering me right now. And I'm... You see how the enemy always uses the victim mentality? I've got, I, got some, I want to say it right now, but I know if I go to school on Monday, they might say I'm fired, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but it involved the fight. But, uh, oh, come on. <laughs> no, I never, I can't use names anyway legally, but, you know, I know not to use the names. But, uh, you know, kid did something to another kid. <laughs> and he turned around and punched him. I said, I'd have done the same thing. <laughs> I mean, why can't, we, why can't we quit creating victims in our school system, in our public places, out, you know, where you work? Well, you just triggered me. Well, get untriggered. You're an adult. I don't care. It doesn't matter what happened when you were a kid. You're an adult. Grow up. Mature. Get rid of the old leaves. All that dead stuff that's just hanging on and won't let go. <sighs> so, as he said, now watch this, this, this is good too. But without a parable spake he not unto them, and when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. So you'll notice that Jesus didn't tell the ones that didn't believe him, everything. He just said a little parable and said if they could see if they could figure it out. But he always explained because God understood. God was merciful. He was gracious. He understood that we were idiots back then. We didn't know any different. All they had back then was religion. So Jesus says, okay, guys, come away in private. Okay? You want to hear from God? Get private with him. Okay? Sit down, get quiet, and listen. And he will tell you what these things mean. So the information or revelation I get from this mustard seed tree is that we have to demonstrate security. We have to show the world what it looks like to not be insecure. And when they see that you got it figured out, or at least part of it figured out, at least they will come and ask you, how did you fix what you had or what you dealt with? Why do you look like you never have to deal with problems? Nothing ever phases you. You want to be that guy. Nothing phases you. No matter how bad it is. Oh, I got $200 left in my bank account. So what? So all of it. Let's see what happens. Let's take a chance. Give God a chance. Give him 100% and see what happens. John 15. Like I said, I'm, get, I'm, I'm headed to closing mode, okay? I'm, I'm headed that direction, okay? <laughs> John 15. I call this one a pruned tree. Verse 1. He said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. Oh, that is, I am so, gl God, I'm so glad God removed a bunch of branches from my life. Woo, man. But he let the ones grow around me that could teach me and show me. But those branches that were rotten, that were parasites, I'm so glad he is like psh, divine intervention. I heard a, a preacher say one time, and you talk about revelation knowledge. He said, in a relationship, divine intervention is when God comes in and removes somebody from your life because he knows that you are never going to leave them. He knows you will never say no or walk away from them. He divinely intervenes and moves them out of your life because he knows you're never going to do it yourself. Thank God. I can think of several of those relationships that I was, <laughs> if God wouldn't have intervened, I would have never walked away. I just knew I would have just stayed there and stayed there and stayed there and I'd have been away from the river over here with my leaves withering, not knowing what direction to go, suffering financially, not knowing how to mature as a Christian. Thank God God takes those branches and he just cuts them off and throws them in the burn pile. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, watch this, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. I call this one 
the tree that is pruned or the pruned tree. Branches are the people, but these branches have little branches attached to them. The little branches can be little people that are around you. I'm talking people that are maybe under you, maybe people that have no influence, but they're around you. It could also be things. I hear ministers all the time talk about things that God tried to get out of their life. He wouldn't get, whether it's TV, social media, or whatever, or obsession with trying to build a church. Made building the church their God. Instead of making God God, we tried to make building the church God. And we, we were just obsessed with putting in all these things and all these activities and all these programs to make sure the church and everybody came. And then it turned into a seeker-friendly church. There are little... And these little branches can be people or things that God is trying to get out of your life. Purging is very necessary. Do not fight the pruning process. The maturity level that God is trying to take you to, the maturing process, the transpiration where he's up there trying to pull you up. Okay, the pruning process, because we know that the fewer limbs that are on the tree, sometimes it makes the tree healthier, right? We got to get rid of the limbs that are no good. And if we get rid of the limbs that are no good, the nutrients can get to the ones that are. Okay? Do not fight the pruning process. Think about, you need to check yourself. <laughs> what is God trying to get out of your life to take you to a new level and to draw you up? What is God trying to get out of your life? You have to, you have to be honest with yourself. This is a very tough one to be pruned. Nobody likes to be pruned. God, I don't want you taking those things out of my life. I like those things. I love all those things. They're fun. They make me feel good inside. Make me feel better about myself. If you've got something in the world making you feel better about yourself, then you are insecure. You have put more faith in your joy and happiness on that thing than you have in the Word of God. You have made that thing your provider for joy and happiness. And, jo and God's up there trying to, trying to prune the little limbs off. Like, oh, this is a great little branch. I like this branch here. This looks beautiful. All these beautiful leaves. But there's a few little things that I need to take off this branch to make this branch even stronger. Don't forget who the husbandman is. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. The husbandman, he is the one that is doing the pruning. He is the one that sees what is wrong with you and what you need to fix in order to get rid of those nasty, stinky, dead leaves that are on your tree. I want to read you a few others right here that I looked up. You don't have to go here. It would take too long to, to travel through to go find these scriptures. Okay, now I call this one the tree of love. Okay, a tree of love. This is Song of Solomon, okay? Chapter 2, verse 13. The fig tree ripens her green figs. The vines are in blossom. Okay? They give out their fragrance. Did you know love has a fragrance? Oh, man, when you start to look at love the way God does, you don't, you don't just say love anymore. Oh, I just love that. Love is one of those words like insecurity. It's just way overused. And we've dumbed it down so far that we don't even know what God's love is anymore. We have dumbed down the word love and what it actually is according to God's way, according to God, God's ways. He said, arise. Now think about the transpiration again. Think about transpiring, trying to pull you up. He said, arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. You want to learn about the love of God? You need to get in a private place. When Jesus was doing his most intimate details and in talking about interpreting parables and all these things, there was a lot of things he told the disciples. He didn't tell anybody else. You are one of those that is taking the word into all the world. And the private place is where he says, come away with me and I'll show you what my love is. My friends, if you can figure out the love of God, you can figure out all the problems in the world. All the problems that exist in your life and everybody else's. 
Don't say, well, you know, religious will say, well, you can't judge me. I don't need to judge you. I can tell by the, by the love walk what's wrong with you. I don't need to try to fix you unless you want to be fixed. You can call God and he'll fix you. Or I can explain what I know. But love, the love walk will explain what's wrong in your life and everybody else's. And if they ever come to you needing help, you'll know how to fix them. I call this one the tree of hope. Isaiah 55, 12. He said, for you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and hills will break out before you into singing and all the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Remember when Jesus was riding the little donkey? He wasn't riding a big old white horse, flowing mane, braided mane and tail. He's riding a donkey, riding in there. And they were like, do you hear it? All the Sadducees and the Pharisees are like, do you hear what these people are saying? He says, he says, tell them to be quiet. He said, if I tell them to be quiet, <laughs> what's going to happen? All the stones will, cut, will rejoice and scream out and say, you know, all these wonderful things. But I can't tell them to be quiet. They're free-moving agents. Aren't you a free-roaming agent? You're a person with a free will saying what you want to say because that's what you believe. You say what you believe. Everything that comes out of your mouth is what you believe. If you say bad things about yourself, it's probably because you believe bad things about yourself. You don't know what the Word says about you. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and hills will break out before you into singing and all the trees. I can just see the trees out there with their little limbs, you know, you know, clapping. It'd be like Wizard of Oz, you know, and they come up on them mean trees and those things, are, they're throwing apples at them, you know. These trees are alive. Everything on the planet is alive. It has life in it. It may not have a spirit in it like we do, but it's alive, it's breathing, it's doing something, it's constantly doing something. Transpiring or transpiration is what they would call it to a human. It's the same thing as sweating. Well, what happens when you work? You sweat. Faith without what? Works is a dead tree. If that tree can't transpire, the tree dies. And the last one, Jesus, the tree of salvation. Oh, this is so good. In Isaiah 61, verse 3, and in also 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, Isaiah 61, 3 says, To provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You, you put a scripture out there yesterday or the other day about, the heavy, about heaviness, and you were rebuking it. I think, I don't remember what scripture it was. But when I saw that, I saw it yesterday, and I was like, it's a lot to, has a lot to do with Isaiah 61 3. That they may be called what? Trees of righteousness. Garland, a garland for ashes, the oil of joy. Now, if you know anything about oil, you know it's usually symbolic for the Holy Spirit. The oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, so that we can be what? Trees of righteousness. The planting of Yahweh, God the gardener, that he may be glorified. God's trying to plant you. He's trying to give you the garland the, the, put around, to put around your neck and the oil of joy for the morning. And the garment of praise for heaviness. What he's trying to do right here is change your outlook on life. He said, you feel this way, but I offer this. You feel this way, but I offer this. You feel also this way, I offer this. So that what? You can be a tree of righteousness. In 1 Peter chapter 2, 24, he says, he, he himself bore our sins in his body on the what? The tree. That we, having died to sins, might live to righteousness. You were healed by his wounds. Okay, now let me show you some symbolism here. They took a robe made by man and threw it on him and mocked him, didn't they? What did they put on his head? Crown of thorns. What did it come off of? came off of a bush. Okay? Now, the crucifixion was about death of death. Did you get that? The crucifixion was about death of death. Death was about to die. Remember the scripture says, Oh, death, where is your sting? See, it used to hurt a little bit. 
I don't know spiritually what that meant because I've never, I wasn't in the Old Testament. I don't know what that meant. But death has no sting. He wore a garland of thorns and a robe given to him by man and died on a what? A tree. He didn't die on a tree that was planted. He died on a tree that was honed out of it. He died on, on the cross that was honed out of the tree. What happens when you take something away from its source? It dies. That's why your two-by-fours in your house that are in the walls don't grow anymore, right? Because it's what? Taken away from the source. Your house doesn't grow trees inside of your walls. Because why? It's taken away from the source. Everything on the day of judgment, the day, or the day that he died, when he was nailed to the tree, he was killing death, destroying it. You don't have to have death in your finances anymore. You don't have to be dead in your, in your spirit man anymore. You don't have to be dead in your physical body anymore. If you fix the root, you can fix the fruit. You know, the root is made of wood too. It's a part of the tree. It's just on the ground where you can't see it. He's trying to give you a crown of righteousness, a robe of glory. For all your problems, God has a solution. If you can master the love walk, you can master life. Amen? Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you've never received Jesus as your Lord... And I know there's a few visitors here, but if you've never received Jesus as your Lord, we give you an opportunity right now, today, right now. On this day, you have an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. God can fix your spirit, man. He can fix your physical bodies. He can tell you how, he can teach you how to fix other people. Teach you how to fix other people's spiritual body, spiritual man. And fix other people's spiritual, spiritual walk and their physical bodies. If there's something lacking in your life, maybe you haven't mastered the love walk. But if you're not saved, you've never received Jesus as your Lord, I'm telling you right now that the love walk begins with receiving Jesus as your Lord. And Savior. If you've never received Jesus as your Lord, we're going to pray a prayer with you. In here today, we're going to pray this prayer. And everybody's going to pray it with us. And we're going to we're going to get serious with God and we're going to pray it and you're going to repeat it. And I believe that if you've never received Jesus as your Lord, I believe right now that if you pray this prayer and you mean what you say and you get serious with God and you start your love walk by just receiving Jesus. That's the first step. Your first step is to receive Jesus as Lord. And believing and knowing that you have sinned and that you receive him as your savior. So I would urge you, if you're not saved today, to pray this prayer with us and get serious with, with God right now. Say it like this. Repeat after me. Say, Father in heaven, I open the door of my heart. I ask you, Jesus, come into my heart. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe you, Jesus. Died on the cross for my sins. And I receive you today in the name of Jesus. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if that was you, if you prayed that prayer and you meant what you said, just nobody's looking around. We're just going to ask you to raise your hand on the count of three. If that was you, just when you raise your hand, you're just saying, I received Jesus for the first time today. If that was you, on the count of three, get your hand up. Ready? One, two, three, go. Is there anybody? Anybody? All right, look at me. Very good. Hello. All right. I just love you guys. That's the love walk. Learn how to love. And I don't even know all y'all. Ha I've had people go to church here for years. Never knew a name. Never knew their name. And they come up and they've been going here for years. But, you know, just like you guys and like me, you know, we're not around each other all the time. You know, so I don't get to meet all of you. But if you are new here and you're visiting here, 
I know Corey would say the same thing. He'd say, I love you guys. Thanks for coming. And I just love you. Amen. I love you guys. All right. Hallelujah.